Hi, my name is Mike Levier, and I am a business relationship manager for the Remedy Force product here at BMC Software. And today, I'm going to show you how to monitor your Remedy Force license subscription count. Now, one of the most common ways is to run the out of the box license metric report. Now, this report will display all active users by default, along with a few other fields such as the service desk staff checkbox uh, and the profiles assigned to those users. The second option is to add a custom report to a dashboard. Now on this screen, the gauge dashboard is displaying a total count of four staff users. And you can also see that five is set as the maximum number allowed before it reaches the red area. And the third option is to receive an email notification should you ever exceed your subscription count. This is very new to most of you, but it will probably be the most effective way to stay on top of your license count. Now let's have a look at how we can do this. So now before we go into the reports, let's have a look to see what I have in my environment when it comes to users. So I'm going to click on Manage Users and click on Users. And you'll see in my environment, I do have four staff users and they do have staff profile or administrative profile and the rest are clients, they are client profiles. So when I run my report, I should only come up with four staff users and these are all active users. So let's go ahead and click the reports tab. So when you get to the reports tab, you can actually search for the out of the box report called license metric report. So we'll just click in this little field here and just type license metric or just the word license and you'll see out of the box in the BMC Remedy Force reports folder is the license metric report. So we'll go ahead and click on that report. Now by clicking on that report, it actually runs it right away and gives you uh, your, your results. Now if we look closely in here, so you'll notice that I do have my four staff users and the rest are clients. Now this is great in my environment. I have a small subset of users, but you may have hundreds or even thousands of users, including your clients and some of your staff. So there's an easier way to streamline this report. So we're going to go ahead and click on customize. Now there's several fields or several columns on this report that you can ignore. Um, I'm not going to remove them in this example. I will just focus on uh, customizing it to streamline the report to just show you your staff users. So our goal here is to look at all of the active users in our environment and filter out all of those who are not staff. Now before we do that, I just want to mention a couple of things. Rule of thumb is if you have a profile of either service as staff and even possibly an administrator, you're going to want the service as staff checked. If you're a client, you won't need those checked. Now it does happen sometimes that you may have added the service desk staff checkbox to a staff who may have been moved to a client down the road and you forgot to uncheck that checkbox. So this is where filtering this appropriately will help you uh, to find those, those users. Now let's assume everything was done properly. So you have all of your service desk staff profiles with the service desk staff checkbox checked and all of those with the client profiles don't have the checkbox checked. So let's assume this is the perfect environment. All we want is a report to display those staff users. So I'm going to add a filter here. I'm going to look for the service desk staff checkbox. I'm going to put it in the filters and I'm going to look for the true option. So now we're filtering all of these service desk staff true. I want to see those on my report. Now, if I run the report, you'll notice I do have my four records. So now you're going to want to save this report. You don't want to have to redo this every time. So I would highly recommend you click on save as, as opposed to just save. You don't want to save your, you know, your new, newly applied filters on top of an out of the box report. So let's click on save as, and we're going to call this one, um, staff monitoring. And we're going to move this to my personal custom reports folder and I'm going to click on save. So now if I can click the report anytime you want, you'll see your staff users um, and you know your account is probably close to what your subscription is. So this is option number one. Now option number two we mentioned earlier was to pull a report or a custom report into a dashboard. Well, we just created a custom report. So let's pull this report into our dashboard. 
So we're going to click on the Dashboard tab. So what you're looking at here is a Revenue Force Admin Dashboard. Now, we're going to create our chart right next to the existing one. So we're going to click on Edit. Now on this screen, um, I'm going to start by making this a little wider than what it is by default. And I'm going to have a gauge, so I'm, I'll drag the gauge over. And I'm going to go to the data source and I'm going to look for the, the report we just created. And we called it Staff Monitoring and I'll bring that over. Now because you're using a gauge chart, you're most likely going to get this error message. And that's because we didn't save our report in a proper format. So let's go back to the report. I'm going to click on close and we're going to go back to the report and we're going to save it in the proper format so that we can use the gauge uh, chart. So we'll click on reports and we'll go back to staff monitoring. And we're going to customize it. And all we're going to do is we're going to click on the service desk staff checkbox header and drag it into this blue section and let go. So what we're doing is we're basically summarizing the results. Now we're going to go ahead and hit save. And then we're going to close the report. Now let's return to the dashboard and try to create our chart again. We'll click on edit. And we're going to make this wide again. And we're going to grab the gauge chart and we're going to search for the report that we just created staff monitoring all right now by default you'll notice the colors are flipped over and there's no breaking point set properly so I'm going to click on the little gauge and we're basically going to recreate this to look like the first one we have here so the first color is obviously not red I want to make it green the center one will leave it yellow and the last one will make it red. And my maximum, um, I'm going to change that to seven. The breaking point to enter into the red, I'm going to make it a five, telling me that five is what I'm subscribed for. So anything over five, I want the needle to be in the red. And then the first breaking point, we'll make that a three just to kind of even out the chart. So I'm going to click OK. And you'll notice now that this is exactly what I'm looking for. Now, I would recommend you edit the title. In the other chart, you'll notice that I, in brackets, added the uh, five paid seats. So now I know at the administrator, what am I looking for at uh, that five number? So maybe in six months or a year, we happen to buy more licenses. I'll just update this number. And obviously, I will change the breaking point to that magic number as well. So this is how you add a chart to a dashboard in order for you to uh, monitor uh, your license count. Now let's look at the third option, receiving an email from the system should you ever exceed that magic number. So we're going to close this window and we're going to return to the reports tab. All right, and we're going to click on the staff monitoring. Now. What, what we're doing here is we're going to actually subscribe to this report. And when you click on subscribe, you'll have some options here that we can leverage. So let's click on subscribe. Now this screen allows you to add some conditions as to when you want to receive an email uh, based on certain criteria. So let's look at the first one, the type. I would recommend that you select every time conditions are met. Otherwise, if you just select only the first time conditions are met, you're going to get that one email. And if you ignore it or delete it by accident, you're never going to know that things were, were different. So I would highly recommend you select the every time conditions are met. Now the conditions here, my record count, we know based on that report, we've filtered everybody else out except for the staff. And our staff count currently right now is four. If our paid seat count is five, I want to be notified when that count is anything over five. So I'm going to say record count is greater than five. How often do you want this to run? Well, I want this to run every weekday. I don't care to get emails on Saturdays and Sundays. Uh, so I'm going to select every weekday and I'm going to select, I'm, I'll leave it at default 7 a.m. simply because if I make this like 5 p.m. or 6 p.m. after my shift, well, that email 
you know, th this subscription will run, I'll receive the email, then I'm going to receive more email from all kinds of places throughout the evening and the next morning, and that email may get buried in my inbox. I would like to have it about an hour before I start work. So when I log in, it's one of the fresher emails in my inbox. So I'll leave it at 7 a.m. I do not want a mobile notification, but I do want send email notification. And it's active, and I can click on save now. So nothing is theoretically going to happen until 7 a.m. tomorrow. But I want to test this to make sure that this is going to work. So I'm going to flip over to the, my active users in the system, and I'm purposely going to make six users staff. So I already have four. I'm going to go ahead and click on um, Greg Brady. I'm going to edit him. He is a client. I'm not going to change his profile. I just want to focus on the service desk staff. And I'm going to do the same to Jan. Now I have six staff users. So if this report was to run tomorrow morning at seven, I should receive an email. So what we're going to do, we're going to force a subscription right now to see if this works. So we're going to go to the report, staff monitoring, and you'll notice we do have the six records. Just go ahead and click on edit subscription. And the record count greater than five, which is what we want. So at the very bottom, I'm going to click save and run now. This is actually going to run the subscription right now. And at, now that I, we know that we're over the five, I should receive an email from Salesforce. And I just received it. Let's go ahead and have a look at it. So here's a copy of the email I just received. Uh, the condition you specify when subscribing to staff monitoring have been met. The record count is six and is greater than five. So subscribing to the report is probably the best method your administrator can use in order to stay on top of your subscription count. So I hope you've enjoyed the video. Uh, thanks for watching. And if you have any questions, please contact your CSM or email us at remedy4success at bmc.com.